Hey, what's up, guys? Uh, this is going to be a video specifically for the Polish Piper, Nick. But, of course, I'm making it public instead of private because I figured um, some of the information I'm going to give to a non-knife person who I'm giving a knife, um, it, it, a lot of people can benefit from it. If you're new to knives or maybe you watch the channel because you like the lighter videos or something else and maybe you don't know a lot about knives, I'm sure someone can benefit from this information, so I'm going to make it public. So I'm kind of talking to Nick directly, but I'm talking to anyone who is not familiar with knives. So it's just a general, very, very basic, here's some information on how to take care of your knife. So I'm going to give you, Nick, uh, the option between two knives. Now, I told Nick that I would hook him up with a folding knife. He was very proud. He just did a video. He showed his Bear grills fixed blade he got. And this is someone who doesn't know anything about knives, which is fine. It's fine. But he's getting, maybe not getting into the hobby, but... He gets enough packages. He needs a dedicated knife to unbox these things. So, um, you know, I want to hook him up with a folder. Originally, it was going to be some kind of a trade. And uh, honestly, I have, I have so much tobacco to try right now and stuff that I just would feel bad at this point taking any tobacco from anyone. And uh, his stash is uh, kind of on the low side. So uh, I'm just going to leave it open-ended. He can send me something next week or it could be next year. Uh, it's more of a gift than expectations to get something in return. Wanted to hook him up because he's a nice guy, he's entertaining, and he is a uh, an EMT, which I, I always think it's awesome. Anyone, if you're in the emergency services, doctors, nurses, EMTs, ambulance driver, which he happens to be, uh, police force, um, military of any kind, any branch of military, um, firefighters, you know, these are all people who put their life on the line every single day to help strangers, and that's an amazing thing. So uh, occasionally I do um, hook up some, some different cops and, and some different military people who watch the videos. They send nice messages and I always like to thank people for their service and stuff like that. So I just felt the need to hook Nick up because he's a nice guy and uh, he rides me with entertainment. So I'm uh, just sharing the wealth a little bit. Uh, I want to give you a choice, Nick, between two knives. Now, this first knife is the Bear Grylls folding knife, which is the companion to your fixed blade. This will be door number one, <laughs> if you choose. Um, I don't know if you're one of those people that just like to have matching things. If you are, this is for you. Um, I'm not particularly fond of this. I did a review on it. It's not a bad knife. It's certainly not the best knife. And for the money, there's lots of options out there. So if you're interested in this specific knife, um, some quick features. It has ambidextrous thumb studs, so you can open it one-handed with uh, both hands. Lefty or righty, if you choose. Um, it's on both sides, and it's got a little pocket clip on there. It's a lockback design. In other words, this is what, what locks. It's a bar that pivots toward the middle here, so you push down back here. That lifts the bar, frees the blade up. Okay, when it's open position, it does lock, so it's not going to fold on you. Simple knife, nothing wrong with it. But because you already have the fixed blade, maybe you want this one. I don't know how you roll. Um, but may I suggest... A door number two. <laughs> and there's a reason I picked this knife. First of all, it's a cool knife. Um, it, it's a better knife, in my opinion, than this one. It's also a little bit more expensive. But it's the CRKT shenanigans. And because I enjoy your channel so much because of your shenanigans, I think it's pretty fitting. Um, stylish, a little bit bigger. A totally different setup with this knife. Here are them, here are them side by side, if you could see them both. Get my fingers out of the way so you can kind of get a better idea. They're both ergonomic. I definitely prefer this one, but choose whatever you wish. This one is a liner lock. So when the, block, when the blade locks open on the inside, the liner moves over, okay? And that's what prevents the blade from coming down. Okay, so this also locks. To unlock this, you push the liner over to the side. You can see that. Then you can move your blade down into the handle. This has no thumb studs on it to open it. It has a flipper. This is completely legal in Jersey, where you live. I spent most of my life in Jersey. I know all the laws. Um, so it, it's not an automatic knife. However, you still get that automatic feel because it's a very smooth uh, action on this knife. And the, the flipper is just its very effective. All you got to do is push down. It's the part of the blade. As it opens up, it becomes the guard here. It helps prevent your hand from moving forward. Um, comfortable knife. Very easy to operate and use. Once you get a hang of this, just all you're, all you're doing is pushing it down. That blade shoots right out. It's not automatic. 
but it's known as a, a flipper. Pretty cool. I know you don't have any concept of anything I'm talking about, that's why I'm trying to explain it all to you. Um, but pick whatever one you like more. I just like your shenanigans, so I thought that'd be a, a cool offering. So anyway, uh, besides the knife, I also want to give you a, uh, a little tool. Now this is the Rescue Me tool, and this is specifically because you're an EMT. And uh, I'm not sure what kind of tools they provide you you know, at work or what kind of, um, you know, stuff you may have in the vehicle already. And I really don't know what the protocol is as far as coming up to an accident. I mean, obviously when something happens, I, I know they send cops out. Sometimes they'll send, you know, fire department and so forth. So I don't know if you're not, if you're always the first responder or if you're supposed to be the first people at a scene and help you people. Okay. This tool is great to cut seatbelts off. It's great to uh, maybe strip off clothing. You know, if someone has a big injury to their thigh, let's say, you can use this towards the uh, bottom of the pants and just rip up the pants to get to that wound very fast and efficiently. I'm not sure if that's something you need to do at work, but this is an awesome tool to have. And regardless, if you can't use it at work, you can always put this on your keys for your Jeep, for your personal usage for you and your wife, or maybe keep it on the wife's keys so you know that she's always good to go when she's in the car. This has two functions. Basically a little split ring, which you attach to your keys, okay, which is attached to a little uh, black plastic piece. And this kind of covers the guard, so you know it's very safe. You're not going to cut yourself or anything. Nothing's going to get snagged in there. But when you're ready to use it, all you do is pull it apart. It pops right out just like that. Okay, you can take it on and off whenever you want. Very simple to use. You have a little open channel here and a razor blade in there. And you use this as a seatbelt cutter. You know, Or like I said, any kind of material that you feed through here, it's a brand new razor blade. It's nice and sharp. Put the material in the end and just do a on an angle, a quick, fast motion. It's going to zip right through. So again, if you happen to be the first responder on an accident, you can cut off a seatbelt very quickly. And I got a fear that since you're not, since you're kind of new to knives, and all I pictured was one of these knives just poking over and over some poor old lady in a car accident. Just, I'm, I'm sorry, lady, I'm trying to cut your seatbelt off. Just calm down. And just keep poking her with that very fine tip. And uh, I was thinking, hmm. Yeah, this is probably better suited for uh, for when you're home, just hanging around the house or, you know, driving around or whatever. So anyway, uh, I thought that'd be a cool little addition to the tool. Now, now that you have your fixed blade and you're going to have one of these folders, let's talk a little bit about maintenance. Since you're not a knife guy per se, uh, I'm sure you don't really want to go out and invest money in sharpening systems or sharpening tools and so forth to maintain your, your new knives. Um, you, I did see you have a sharpening stone on your Bear Grylls fixed blade. Um, that'll work. That's fine. I'll give you a couple little tips. This is for anyone watching. Ceramic makes an awesome sharpening stone. Okay, it's a, an average coffee cup, ceramic coffee mug. All right. Most of your ceramics are going to have a glaze on them. Okay, that's where you get the color, you get the shiny finish, it's smooth. That's not what you want. You want the exposed portion of the ceramic, okay, which is usually on the bottom, okay, because this is where they sit in the kiln and it's hard to get a completely covered piece. So most most of the times it's the bottom. You can use even your standard dishes, you know, your your um, the bowls you have in your cabinet probably have an exposed rim on the very bottom, not the, not the flat part, but the little ring that it sits on when it's on the table or so forth. It's going to be rough ceramic, smooth. You know, not rough like, ow, that hurts rough, but, you know, it's it's not, it doesn't have a gloss on it. It's natural ceramic. Ceramic's harder than most steels. So, when you expose the ceramics, and I'm going to use, eh, I'll use this knife. I'll resharpen it afterwards, because right now it's sharper than it needs. This is not going to sharpen, in other words. But, for you at home, when your knife gets dull, you can use this as a sharpening stone, just like you would any other sharpening stone. You can use that surface. Again, your plate's... Any kind of smooth exposed ceramics is going to work fine. You can even, and I'll do videos in this future, but you can sharpen your blades on the top part of your window on the glass. Um, now, once you get a hang of sharpening, which, I mean, the real basic explanation of this to use for your stone as well is you start from the base of the blade and you work your way up to the top. Your serrations, don't even bother with them, man. All you're going to do is ruin them. Uh, I, it's from experience. When you first get into knives and you don't have any equipment or any knowledge of sharpening, you don't even bother. They're just going to get worse and worse. But your plain edge portion of your your, your fixed blade and possibly this knife if you want it, um, you can sharpen on your stone. 
first of all, put it flat against the stone, then just tilt it, okay, until you kind of feel where the edge is. You'll, once you get a hang of this, you'll understand what I'm talking about, but if you really have no concept of edges or edge angles or geometry of, of your blade, put it like, just, just lift it up a little, just angle it a little bit. And all you wanna do is pretend you're cutting a thin slice off of the stone, okay? It's a very basic way to explain it. Start from the bottom, work your way towards the front, don't push down very hard. You, I mean, almost no pressure at all. Just kind of sliding it across gently. And then do the same amount of passes on the other side. Same angle. Don't have a really low angle on this side, then sharpen the other side way up here. You just get to dull your knife. All right, just do a couple passes on each side. And then you'll have a rough edge, okay? How you can further that edge and uh, sharpen it up even better is take... Um, your leather belt, if you have a leather belt, and same deal like the ceramics. You don't want to use the smooth, shiny side. You want to use the, the raw leather. Okay, now when you're sharpening, you're pushing forward. Let me give you this angle. You're pushing forward like you're trying to slice off a thin layer off of your stone. What you're going to do now with your leather belt is what's called stropping. The purpose of stropping is taking an already somewhat sharp edge and polishing it and straightening it. Okay, if you continue to strop your knives every single day after you use them, you won't need to sharpen them for a very long time. And they will get scary, scary sharp. When you're stropping against your leather, you don't want to go with it like you're cutting it. You want to go away from it. So it's the opposite. And same thing, just a little bit on, uh, on both sides. All right, so hopefully that wasn't too confusing. But if it was... I got videos on the subject and there's hundreds of other awesome, awesome knife channels on YouTube that you can just search and learn everything you want to know about your knives. And now that I sharpen this on the ceramic, it's less sharp than it was before when I, I did the works to it. So anyway, whatever knife you pick, it will come razor sharp. The shenanigan right now I had uh, sharpened up on one of my sharpening systems called the Edge Pro Apex, which put a nice polished edge on it. And then I stropped it. So here's the current condition of this blade. It's sharp. I'm going to send you a very sharp knife no matter what you pick. But, just want to show you, that's what you want your edge to be. Got little curves in there. Alright, so uh, anyway, that's it Nick. You let me know what you like what strikes your fancy, and uh, I'll get it out to you ASAP with that little rescue me tool. So that may be, it may be cool, like I said, if you can't use it at work, maybe give it to the old wife to keep on her keys this way. Oh, I didn't even tell you the other function, duh. Besides the, uh, the cutter that's on it, it also has a, uh, a glass breaker, which is very easy to use. This bottom portion that's black, it pushes in. Do not, I'm telling you right now, do not push it on with your finger because when this plastic piece pushes down to a certain point, it has some resistance to it. When it gets all the way down the bottom, it clicks and it has a spring, um, spring powered carbide tip on it. And this is a glass breaker. All you do to use this, uh, I don't have anything in front of me. I'll do it on the desk, but actually here, I'll use this pad of paper. When you push this down all the way, it'll pop. Actually, I have no rigidity here. There we go. Can you see that? Yeah. All right. So when you push this down all the way, you're going to hear it click. And what that's doing is as you're pushing down, it's building up all this tension. When it clicks, it releases. And it's basically a little spike. And the spike pops out real quick. You hear that big loud pop? That little dent will definitely shatter glass. Okay. So if you're, you know, you need to, you get into a car accident, you use this to cut your uh, seatbelt off real quick. And let's say for some reason the doors jam, whatever the situation, you need to get out of that window. You can't use the doors, they're not functional. Just push this up against the glass. I mean, close your eyes, you know, keep your head away from the glass, just push up against the glass and it will shatter the glass so you can get out of your car. So awesome, awesome functional little tool. That spring-loaded spike will work every single time. You can use it continuously. Same with the, uh, the cutter, but I would recommend not using the cutter and keeping that razor edge uh, until an actual emergency because you hate to have to use it in an emergency and then not work right because it's dull. So anyway, that's a very long-winded uh, explanation of stuff. 
hopefully some of you guys got that tip on the sharpening on ceramics, uh, the other knife guys out there. I was planning on doing videos on it. There, there's already videos on this stuff. This is stuff I've learned years and years ago. I don't do it because I have plenty of different sharpening systems. But um, one tip that a lot of people don't know about is the top of your window. Yeah, so I mean, in, preferably in the summertime when it's not cold, you can uh, roll your car window down about halfway and use that exposed rough portion of the glass to sharpen your blades. So just a little tip for me to you. Anyway, that's it. Uh, like I said, specifically made for, uh, the video is made for Nick. Oh, by the way, I didn't even show you what I was resting this on. This is, for all the people who watch my story time videos, that globe that I won in the fourth grade. How awesome is that, a little paperweight? And it's from Texas uh, Instruments that makes the calculators. So yeah, if you watch those videos, this is the, the globe. Very, very cool. So anyway. Okay, so that's all, Nick. Thanks for uh, making videos like you do. Some people, when they make videos, are like, I don't understand why people even watch these things. But it's, it's very much entertaining for a lot of us. And some people like watching my channel because they think I'm entertaining, just like I watch your channel because I think you're entertaining. And the world goes round and round. <laughs> so anyway, keep up. Whatever you decide to do, I'll tune in and I'll watch. I'm a, I'm a loyal subscriber. And, uh, and that's all. All right, Nick, uh, just in case you forget to bring your coffee mug into the bathroom, keep in mind the royal throne is also made of porcelain. Here's the top to my toilet tank, and yours will be very similar to mine. And guess what you're going to find on the underside? Yes, exposed ceramic. So when you're doing your business in there, hold this like a little violin. You got a nice long stretch. Actually, this is probably, if you bring this into your kitchen, this will work better than your, your sharpening stone, guaranteed. Um, just use the exposed ceramic in here. This is a nice straight level area. And just uh, play some beautiful music. It'll work, I'm telling you. Don't look at me like I'm crazy. And when you're all done, be sure to strop. I did cut the film here because I wanted to grab a belt to show you what I was talking about with the stropping. This is a standard uh, leather belt. The top, glossy finish, you know, you don't want that. You want the bare exposed leather on the bottom, okay? Now, after, after you do this a few times, it's gonna start to get smooth. That's what you want. So, tie off your belt to something, preferably your towel rack, since you are in the bathroom. And so you have some tension, okay? So you pull it nice and taut. And while it's nice and, uh, you know, under tension like that, take your blade. And again, this is very important. When you're doing your stropping, you don't want to go with it like you're cutting. You want to go against it. Or, or excuse me, you want to go away from it. All right, so it's kind of hard to show because I don't have anything to hold this with. But I'll play another violin here. Give it a quick demo. All right. So when you're sharpening, you're trying to cut a thin layer off. When you're stropping, you're going backwards. But you want to keep this nice and taut, all right? Nice and straight. Don't forget the other side. And that's all you need to know. So. That's pretty much it. A uh, little tip when you strop, if you really get into it and you get an actual strop and so forth, um, you're going to want to invest in some stropping compound or paste. Um, little tip, if you're going to get an old belt and dedicate it to a strop, and this goes for anyone, you can use a little bit of, uh, of any kind of metal polish, like even um, some of the auto uh, you know, stuff that's made for cars, you know, the polish up metal on your cars. Uh, you can certainly use those polishes as a uh, you know, a paste or a compound for your stropping. So, anyway, that's pretty much it. So you didn't know that, Nick, huh? This whole time, looking for, uh, you're all excited about your little sharpening stone and your sheath, and every single day, you sit on your sharpening stone. So anyway, my little tips from, you, from me to you guys, and like I said, videos for Nick, but anyone can benefit from this. Uh, a lot of you guys who are into knives already know about stuff like this, but maybe you never thought of taking that old uh, toilet tank lid off because you do have some nice, long, 
I mean on this one, on the back here, it's almost perfectly straight, this little lip right here, all right? Perfectly straight, a nice, even, smooth consistency, a kind of a fine ceramic, all right? So you're gonna get a pretty fine edge on that. And then in addition to sharpening, awesome. Absolutely awesome. So anyway, that's all. Thanks for watching, guys. Appreciate it as always. And I hope you enjoy the rest of your day. Take care.